Oh, so you are. And these would be... Miss March 7th and Mr. Yang, I presume. <laughs> That's right. I'm the first one. He's the second. We're here to help. Marge, try not to sound too excited. We're here for work, remember? Oh, you're the one getting excited. Oh, my first detective case. Finally, my intelligence and wisdom have a chance to shine. Miss March, Mr. Yang, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Make yourselves comfortable. It, one moment, please. Jing Yan, give me the photos! Coming, coming, stop yelling! <sighs> Thanks for waiting. These are the Outworld, the travelers who were sighted in the location specified by the General and the Master Diviner. This was two days before the Ambrosial Arbor came back to life. We'd like you to take a look. Do you recognize any of them as a threat? Let me take a look. Hmm, so these are the suspects. Uh-huh. Hmm. I see. What's wrong, Mr. Yang? See anything fishy? Who's he? I'd like to see more information on him. Which one? L let me see. I don't have any concrete evidence, but I think he's worth checking out. Oh, him? I remember him. He's a traveling merchant. He trades throughout the universe. Knows a thing or two about remedial arts, too. He registered himself on the Xianzhou as... Uh, what was it again? Lo Cha. His name is Lo Cha. That's right, Lo Cha. He came to the Xianzhou with a huge box this time. Some... Sort of funerary contraption. It had a funny name, something to do with coughing. It was pretty conspicuous. I had to ask him about it. A coffin. It's a tool that certain non Shenjo travelers seem to use in death rites. I'm guessing our guests here might recognize it. Huh. <laughs> I swear he said coughing. Anyway, we checked him out. His record on the Xianzhou is squeaky clean. As for this caffeine thing. Coffin. Yeah, yeah. Either way, it definitely had something to do with funerals. There are lots of travelers on the Lawville, each with their own star system and death rites. I guess that must be Loach's line of work. Is there something up with him? Not necessarily, but I have my reasons for wanting to investigate. What was he doing in the days leading up to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection? That's complicated. Come with me to the four-square mirror. It'll be easier to explain. Exalting Sanctum is one of the Lafu's crucial central cities. The higher-ups are very concerned about security issues here. That's why there are so many Psychranes stationed in the area. Lacha arrived on the Lafu a few days prior to the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Up until the day before the resurrection, there was nothing suspicious about his behavior. Oh, I figured it out! The day before the resurrection, he appeared near the Ambrosial Arbor with a Stellaron! Oh yeah, I guess. You're pretty smart. Sometimes. <laughs> you lot are enthusiastic, I'll give you that. The reason I mentioned the day before the resurrection is because we have no idea what he did that day. The resurrection brought about unusual yin-yang phenomena that caused the entire Psycrane system to malfunction. The image data from the day of the incident is beyond restoration. And the data from that day before was badly affected. We will, in due course. But we can't be too general. Specific questions are key. Not to mention, without a clear suspicion, it would involve multiple interrogations. So, 
If you feel this Lacha is suspicious in some way, make it known. Then I can arrange for his detention and interrogation. How should I put this? He just looks kind of... Uh, Mr. Yang, you were going off of his appearance this whole time? I thought you had some super secret thing up your sleeve. Uh, didn't your mom ever tell you not to judge a book by its... Exactly! Huh? Well, wait, that's not the point! Sorry. What I mean is... Hmm, it's difficult to explain, but my instinct tells me this Law Cha is involved somehow. Apologies. Uh, I realize this is personal speculation. That's all right. Instinct is an important part of any Realm Keeping Commission investigation. There are times when my gut tells me something's not right, and there's usually a reason for it. I'm with you on this one. Be that as it may, as an official, I can't go bringing someone in based on a villainous appearance. Because if a complaint led to his dismissal, it would leave a blemish on his resume, making it difficult for him to advance his career for the next few centuries. Precise no! What are you talking about? <sighs> anyway, if you want to investigate, I can grant you access to the Foursquare Mirror. Jing Yan, you'll be assisting our esteemed guests in their investigation. Isn't it inappropriate for an officer of the Realm Keeping Commission to assist the public in investigating someone? Ah, not at all. Make sure you don't leave the Commission. Just help them check the Cycrene footage. Keep me updated on progress. If you find hard evidence, I'll be there in a flash. One thing, though. Don't approach him. If you make a discovery, contact me first. We're thankful that you're entrusting this to us. We'll keep it by the book. Don't worry. The Express Crew keeps its promises. We won't disappoint you. <sighs> Jin Yen, over to you. I need to get going. Understood. This might take you some time. Come and find me when you're ready. the data any time from here. Are you ready? All right, follow me. As official Da Hao mentioned, the arbor caused unusual yin-yang phenomena, which affected the entire Cycrene system. We lost a lot of video footage, and for the image data we recovered, the timestamps are all jumbled up. Look, this is Mr. Locha on the day prior to the resurrection. Uh, so we have to clean up and reorder the footage ourselves? Exactly. Thank you again for your help. Uh, this is your forte. Over to you. That's right. And you're the sidekick. idea what the correct order is? Uh, let me see if this order works. Hmm. Locha exits the star skiff, enters exalting sanctum, goes into an inn, and puts down his luggage, including the coffin. Then he goes to spare time bookshop, but doesn't buy anything. Finally, he leaves and turns a corner into a dark alley! 
The logic in this is sound. Looks like the correct order. Nice work. Oh, nice work indeed. Your sidekick to a genius detective after all. Where does this corner lead to? I checked the map and found a gate in this open area. Look, there's a small dock on the other side. He may have left on a star skiff. Why would he leave Exalting Sanctum via a secluded dock? That's so suspicious. I don't think Mr. Lodshaw could have departed from there. The dock you're referring to is Yunshil Crag 999. It belongs to the Seat of Divine Foresight. It's only used during invasions. That's why that gate is almost always locked. As far as I know, it's been locked for centuries, and only gets opened for occasional inspections. The key question is, when did he leave? There's only one gate in this area, at least on the map. Miss Jingyan, does the remaining footage show anyone else entering or leaving this place? I can find out, but you'll have to wait a while. Most of the footage was lost, but at least there was a whole day of recording. There's a lot that needs checking and confirming first. Understood. Thank you. Thanks so much! We'll be waiting! Patiently. Your assistance in this matter is what requires gratitude. I'll get you what you need as soon as possible. Thanks for waiting. I checked all of the footage we have of the open area. I say all. A lot of it was lost. Are the corrupted parts recoverable? Can we use the same methods again? For some of them, maybe. But I can't guarantee anything. I'll do my best, of course. It'll take more time. I can't hand them over just now. Thank you. Did you find anything in the remaining footage worth paying attention to? Hmm. Only that someone left the area through that exit around two hours after Locha's appearance here. Locha's nowhere to be seen, though. Sure, I follow. Uh, the Angler's origin story, of course. He's a healer from the Alchemy Commission who gets on the wrong side of a mysterious organization called the Tea Society. Two agents in dark clothing wait for him to be alone and then poison him. The drug has the same de-aging effect as the Vidyatara's hatching rebirth. The Angler gets younger and turns back into a child. From there on out, the Angler pursues the Tea Society while solving all kinds of strange cases. <laughs> Their tea must be stronger than Himako's coffee. Uh, the Tea Society is just a code name. Did you think they'd call themselves the Evil Society? They have to have a nice-sounding name to conceal themselves. So, March, what you mean is, the two people in dark clothing are Tea Society agents, and the child is... a de-aged Locha? Oh, what if a crazy angler mystery fan decided to commit a copycat crime? Locha gets turned into a child, then follows a mysterious duo in black. Oh, the plot thickens. This could be a kidnapping. <sighs> the child in the footage has black hair. Locha's hair is blonde. your horses, everyone. I recognize this child now. That's Yinshu, the young shopkeeper at Spare Time Bookshop. Too bad, March. No de-aging, no angler. Uh, a, a detective? 
detective's initial conjectures are bound to be wrong. <laughs> totally expected. The Psycranes weren't able to get a clear look at the two people in dark clothing. Let's ask Inshu. Maybe she saw something. I'll keep trying to recover the lost footage. I'll contact you if there's a breakthrough. All right, let's go! Time to interview the witness! I don't see the shopkeeper. Uh, let's look for her in the area. Business hours aren't over yet. She should be nearby. You two go ahead. I'll wait here in case she comes back. Okay, let's go. Wait, so you're still reading traditional literature? Move on! Uh, so she asked someone to look after the shop for her. But where are they? Looks like they must have left too. <sighs> Looks like Yin Shu isn't here after all. Where could she be? Supernatural Tales Anthology. Sounds like a good bedtime read. Might stop me daring to run to the bathroom at night, though. Wait, so you're still reading traditional literature? Move on already. Web novels are the way forward. A new addition after so many years? Looks like I made the right choice coming to the Lafu. As soon as we've cracked this case, I'm getting myself a copy. Uh, Su Fong is the greatest. Uh, hey, mister. Are you manning the counter for the young shopkeeper of Spare Time Bookshop? Huh? <laughs> young shopkeeper? You mean Young Shu? <laughs> yeah, I am. Something wrong? Um, can you please tell us where she is? <laughs> Why should I? Uh, because we're asking nicely. What's with the attitude? <laughs> I can tell you. If you pay me 500 strails. <laughs> pay you? <laughs> what is this? You want paying for a simple favor? <laughs> Come on. No one ever tell you that information and intelligence are the most valuable commodities? Uh, this guy doesn't seem like the negotiable type. What should we do? Uh, in your dreams? Uh, this is Genius Detective March 7th's case. I should be the one paying. Yeah, 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 same difference. Hey up. If you lie to us, We'll be back. <laughs> I'm not that kind of person. Come on. Yin Shu said she had a voucher for her food stall over an exalting sanctum. She wanted to use it before it expired. You know, she's not been gone long. Probably finishing up her food right now. Oh, 500 strails. 500! <laughs> My purse is crying. Come on, let's go. Are you Yinshu, the shopkeeper at Spare Time Bookshop? There's something we want to talk to you about. Yeah, that's me. Can I help you? You're heading back to the store, right? Let's walk and talk. I'll tell you all about it on the way. Oh, uh, okay. Let's go. I remember that day. After I closed up the store, I walked around for a while. I was looking for a place to read. I found that empty area. It seemed like a good reading spot at first, but then I noticed two people dressed in dark clothing and a blonde outworlder hanging around. Something didn't feel right. So I left. Those two people left the same way I did. So you just happen to be going the same way. 
Did you see what the Outworlder was doing? Mm, sorry. I was only trying to find a place to read. I didn't pay much attention to him. Or the two in dark clothing. All I remember is the two people in dark clothing... Uh, they smell pretty bad. I guess that's not much of a clue. Sorry I can't give you any useful information. On the contrary, any information you can give is valuable. Thank you very much. Still, according to the Psycrane recordings, Rocha's final stop before heading towards the open area was your store. My store? Spare time bookshop? You're sure he came to... Oh, that's right. I remember now he did pay a visit. Oh, how could I forget? He came in, looked at a few titles, and then handed one to me. An old paperback. Everything seemed normal, but after paying for it, he immediately tore off the title page. I was shocked, but he was grinning ear to ear, so I didn't dare ask him about it. After that, he just left the book on the counter and went on his way. I can't believe I'd forget something like that. I guess the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection the day after pushed everything else to the back of my mind. So, what was the book? The Angler Mystery. I was wondering what to do about it. I can't sell a book without a title page. But uh, since you asked about it, here, you can have it. Uh, Mr. Yang's instinct was right all along. Lo Cha is a villain. How can he do this? Tearing up a book as well written as the Angler Mystery. <laughs> Unacceptable. If I knew the answer to that, wouldn't that make me as evil as him? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're forgetting that the Realm Keeping Commission was initially investigating whether someone brought a dangerous object onto the Law Fu. The Hao and the others are probably not aware of what that dangerous object might be, but we know for a fact that it's the Stellaron. I think that by removing the page, Law Cha may have provided us with a key piece of the puzzle. I don't understand. What does tearing out a page have to do with the Stellaron? Are you following Mr. Yang? Exactly. I think Lao Cha may have friends on the Law Fu, and they're using the title page to communicate. Uh, that makes him even worse! How dare he use a book that praises justice for his evil plans! I'm afraid evil plans are still within the realm of speculation at this stage. We have no way of knowing exactly what he did because the Psycrane data was lost. So, is this a dead end? know what time Locha left the open area. Nice! You found footage of him leaving? Yes. According to the Psycrane recordings, he left the area two hours after he entered. Uh, strange. Why spend two hours in such a confined area? He must have been up to something. Uh, maybe he spent all his money on Star Taro bubble tea! and couldn't afford a hotel room. Oddly specific, March. Huh, it's a shame no side cranes are installed in that area. We still have no idea what he was up to. This Locha is getting more suspicious by the minute. Psst. I know Mr. Yang never wears his heart on his sleeve, but do you get the feeling he's a little... restless?
Remember, we're talking about different worlds here. However, I can't deny I'm a little worried that what happened to my home world could befall this place, too. Oh, how does he always hear us? Well, I'm afraid I have some other business to attend to. Let me know if you need anything. You know how to reach me. Uh, thanks for the help, Miss Chingyan. So, what did Law Cha get up to during those missing two hours? I think it's high time Detective March took the gloves off. Oh? And what do you have in mind, Detective? Fieldwork? That won't be necessary, Mr. Yang. As the angler once said, a true detective operates as effectively from their armchair as from the scene of the crime. Hmm. I'll quote the angler again. The field officer is a diligent specimen, yet they lack the detective's instinct to deduce facts from evidence. <laughs> Well, seeing as you're so confident, let's give your idea a try. <sighs> Yay! <laughs> Mr. Yang is the best! Ready? I'm gonna start my reconstruction. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Explaining a theory in front of everyone is more nerve-wracking than I expected. All right, I'll be using the angler's deductive method. Reconstruct what happened from the bad guy's perspective. And now I'm Lodja. Quit messing around, I'm thinking. Oh, almost forgot about that title page. He took it with him, so it must have had some significance. Uh, next up, I need to have a look at that map, Mr. Yang. Hmm, he must have gone through that gate up ahead. No way he would have stayed put in such a small area for two hours. But Miss Jingyan mentioned that gate is a military asset. It's locked all year round. Uh, you think that would stop the likes of Luocha? What kind of Stellaron smuggler would he be if he couldn't get past a door? <laughs> you think a lock like this can stop a girl like me? Uh, fine, I'll be me. You guys will have to imagine his lines instead. Such a rudimentary lock. Easy pickings. Even if Lodshaw was able to unlock the door, what was his goal? His villain friends must have been waiting on the other side to buy the Stellaron! He went to meet them! Now that I think about it, something's not right. Why would they rendezvous at a military airfield? Because... uh... well... We're too law-abiding to understand bad guy logic. Hiding in plain sight, perhaps. Hold on. This would have been too quick a route. And? What's wrong with a quick route? Hmm? Ahem. What's wrong with a quick route, Mr. Yang? We're trying to uncover what Law Cha did during those two hours. But even if he repeated this route 20 times, it wouldn't have taken him that long. Ah, <sighs> true. He must have had a tougher journey than I imagined. Oh, come on, let's start over. Look like a tasty morsel. Those who dare to enter here must face a delicious fate. Ha! Your eyes are bigger than your stomach, foul villain. How about you? Why is the monster talking now? Uh, you know, just a little dramatic effect. 
Monster layers in black market spaces, uh, I doubt the law foo has any of that. At least I doubt things of that nature existed before the Ambrosial Arbor's resurrection. Uh, is it really so far-fetched? We're already assuming that Luolcha came here to sell the Stellaron to a bunch of cutthroats. May as well throw in some monsters here and there. The Angler is both a detective and a fighter. Anyway, it's not like we're gonna be able to conjure up exactly what Luocha ran into. Why not use our own interpretation to bridge the gap? Hmm. I suppose that makes some kind of sense. I, uh... I try to go with the flow. I didn't expect this place to be so treacherous. I'll need to be on my guard going forward. I wonder, just who is the buyer interested in the Stellaron? The buyer is waiting there. Time to head over. Plausible. Looking at the map, this place is well hidden. <sighs> Finally! Mr. Yang approves Detective March's theory. Let's see where this leads first. Stop right there. State your business. Uh, no, that's Puar, the tea society's gatekeeper. Isn't Puar a type of tea? That's right. He's a member of the tea society, so naturally he chose a type of tea as his alias. Hey, I'm talking to you. What's your business here? Can you tell him to be less aggressive? Oh, sure. Excuse me, sir. May I ask whether you're here on business, or...? Never mind. I have a delivery for your boss. I need to give it to him in person. If you could let him know I'm here. Delivery? Ah, yes, the delivery. The boss is waiting for you. I'm afraid I'll need to see some ID first. I wonder if Luocha has something prepared for this moment. That's the code. So you're the one. Wait here a moment. I'll call the boss right away. Take your time. Guar takes the page and goes to find the boss. Before long, Luocha sees an imposing figure walking towards him. Boss, this is the one. He brought the delivery. I'll be the judge of that. This is our boss, Startaro Bubble. Let's see this delivery and make it snappy. So what? This is the Tea Society, remember? Not before I see the money. I'm sure you understand the rules of such a transaction. Save it. Show us the goods first. Easy now. The item in question is extremely dangerous. It's understandable that our friend here wants to take extra precautions. I'm not sure Pom Pom is the best casting choice for a gang boss. Uh, it, it kind of works, right? Who are? Give him the money. Happy now? Ready to hand it over? Be careful. Dangerous is an understatement with this item. I'll take my leave. Yes, you will. Permanently. Kuar, get rid of him. Ah, oh, this was all going so swimmingly. Selling a dangerous item to me makes you my accomplice. 
And I've got too many of those. To keep our little secrets safe, I'm afraid I need to take special measures. When it comes to minor details, March can be very logical. As for the rest of the story... Speaking of which, when did I turn into an Arumaton? That's Puar's little secret! He transforms into an Arumaton in dire situations! I... Okay. Huh. And there I was, thinking you gangsters still had some decorum. Over. Fights like these don't go unnoticed in Exalting Sanctum. Cloud Knights could show up at any minute. Better get going. And so Locha has to make a break for it. But where to? Let me have a look at the map. Aha! Gotcha! Halt! Who goes there? Uh-oh. His only escape is... I'm aboard, Locha! Time to get out of here. So Wolcha hopped on a star skip and fled with the help of his accomplice. And that, ladies and gents, is the truth behind Wolcha's disappearance. So, who was piloting the star skiff? I'm not sure either. The pilot didn't show themselves, so let's just assume it was him. No one gets left out of my stories. March, as much as I enjoyed your deduction, I do have a few questions. For example, if Law Cha took flight from the dock, how could he appear in Psycrane footage two hours later? Also, the dock is a military installation. The Cloud Knights would be on the scene at the slightest disturbance. How did so many monsters show up without warning? Last but not least, even if Law Cha did encounter all of the troubles you described, it wouldn't have taken him two hours to escape. You're right, Mr. Yang. I guess I can't compete with the angler just yet. You know what? Time for some field work. Maybe the answers to our questions are waiting for us at the scene. That might be the best approach. Let's go. Excuse me, officer. We're looking for someone. Can you help us? <sighs> He's got blonde hair, and judging by the way he's dressed, I'd say he was an outworlder. An outworlder with blonde hair? Could it be? May I ask why you're looking for him? He saved our life. Since when did we start sharing a life? Back in. We're not rehearsing. Excuse me, gentlemen. Would this blonde-haired, life-saving outworlder bear any resemblance to our suspect here? Oh, that's him! Mr. Locha, he rescued both of us. Can I ask when this rescue occurred? It was the day before the Ambrosial Arbor came back to life. We were planning to thank him properly, but in the aftermath of the Arbor incident, we never had the time. Are you two... Oh, the people in dark clothing? What's with the wardrobe change? Dark clothing? Ah, oh, I know what you're talking about. What a pair of clowns we are. Dark clothing. <laughs> we... fell into a ditch. Wait, what? There we were. Looking for a spot to practice our new routine. We found a place, eventually. A little dilapidated, but nice and quiet. <sighs> Shame about the giant ditch. <sighs> I lost my footing and slipped right in. My associate here, Ford, yelled after me, Don't panic! Ford's got your back! 
Two seconds later, he landed on my back. Unfortunately, the ditch was connected to a sewer outlet. We were covered head to toe in... Anyway... I assume that's why you thought we had dark clothing on. A dignified story, I'm sure you'll agree. Ugh, no wonder Yinshu said she had to cover her nose. Anyway, thankfully Mr. Lorcha was passing by and dragged us back to dry land. It took all his strength, I'll wager. Thanks, kind stranger. Without your bravery, we'd never have gotten out of that ditch alive. <laughs> no, sir. That if you ever need anything, and it's within our power to help, you can count on us. Even it's beyond our power to help. That's too kind of you. It was nothing, really. Nonsense! You went out of your way to... Don't worry about it. You should head back home now. Take care. No! We can't thank you enough! Oh, one moment, both of you. That sewage could well contain harmful compounds. I'm something of a doctor. Let me give you a prescription. Make sure to use the medicine and get some good rest. There you go. I don't know what to say. Uh, sorry to trouble you. <laughs> uh, we'll take our leave now. Be careful on the back. Wouldn't want to find ourselves in another ditch now, would we? Here. That's the prescription he gave us. A paper flower? It's beautiful. Did Locha make this? That's right. He wrote down the prescription and folded it into shape. <laughs> A man of romantic sensibilities, one might say. Mm. The paper looks familiar. Can I open it? <laughs> of course. We'd already opened it when we showed it to the pharmacy. Ah. <sighs> We were planning on handing it over to the Realm Keeping Commission. We suspect it's probably our best chance of tracing him. We can take it off you. We'll let you know when we find him. Let me see. Uh, of course! What is it? It's the title page of the Angler Mystery! The prescription's on this side, but on the back there's... Huh? So that's what this is all about? Ah, uh, sadly not. Take a look yourself. Immortal spoiler? Ugh, some people just want to watch the world burn. I'm starting to think the Locha we envision doesn't square with a real one. Would a villain do a good deed like this? Ugh, so he paid for the book and tore off the title page to protect people from the spoiler. He must be a fan of this book too. I knew Angler Mystery fans couldn't be bad.